Daddy G Show. Here's yo daddy. Yeah, we, um, we're testing the uh, smoke alarms. <coughs> <coughs> All right, welcome to the Big Daddy G Show. I'm the Big Daddy G, who knew? All right, a couple of things I wanted to talk about. I just uh, got an email saying that some people, some crazy people out there are, um, every time I say, um, they take a shot of something, or they take a puff of something, or a rip of something. So. <coughs> Here's to you, my fellow um, herbalist, um, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, a um, couple of things, a few things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, today we're going to have um, Shane Rice, who is our Whoa. sound guy, or one of our sound guys. Um, he's going to be um, on the show today. And uh, so please, please stay, stay tuned uh, for that. Um, I like to bring in the crew because I don't want you guys to think that I'm the only guy here and that there's one camera. Do we have a big crew? We have three cameras. We have uh, a control room. You know, somebody has to man that stuff. So um, I'd like to share you guys, um, you know, who these guys are so that you know that if it's something that you want to do, you can do it, you know. If, if they can do it, you can do it. Anything one man can do, another man can do. So, a um, couple of things. Uh, our show today is about. Um, we went out to Willie Nelson's place a couple of weeks ago with the, um, I believe, <laughs> Texas t uh, Texas Normal uh, group. We were trying to schedule uh, them being on the show today, uh, seeing how 420 is coming up. Uh, in a little bit, um, we wanted to have them on the show, but we just couldn't get, you know, it was just, everybody's schedule is so hectic because this is the busiest month. So we're gonna see if we can get them on in May, from what I understand. Uh, May's gonna be kind of a short month for us because uh, we're doing some remodeling in the studio, and it's gonna take a couple of weeks uh, to do that. So we're gonna have um, some really cool shows uh, for you guys to watch on the you know, weeks that we're not here. We'll still be here, but in video, I guess. Anyway, um, so you know, it's, it's just gonna be a pre-recorded type thing, but it's gonna be really cool. We're also gonna have um, a clip uh, of our uh, exciting trip to uh, Willie Nelson's place um, in a few minutes. And uh, it's, it was the, um, the p fifth annual uh, Puff and Putt uh, games out there at his ranch. And uh, dude, we, ha we have some really cool uh, interviews and some really cool people that uh, took their time out to, uh, to let us interview them. So you gotta hang, you gotta stay tuned for that. Um, Tyrone worked really, really hard on this uh, clip that uh, we shot out there, uh, edited and sound and all this and all that. I don't know what I don't know what he does, but um, but I know that he does work really hard. So you guys are really really going to enjoy this. So the people from uh, Normal Texas, please please uh, set up a time when we can get you guys in here because the knowledge that you guys have uh, is the knowledge that we need to get out to people so that people understand that uh, cannabis is not. Uh, the devil's lettuce. Uh, very, very good for you. Um, a couple of things. You know, so some more medicine. A couple of things um, that I wanted to tell you guys about was that uh, this cannabis—it's um, helping so many people um, all over all over the world because um, they've realized that it's curing cancer. You know, some cancers. It's also curing or, or helping people that have seizures. It's also helping people with migraines. It's al also helping people with uh, high blood pressure, uh, people with diabetes, uh, people with um, slow, um, 
flow, you know, or bad flow, blood flow uh, problems. So, you know, all our lives, uh, as far as I can, as long, as far back as I can remember, um, all our lives we've been told that it's bad for us, you know, stay away from us, or stay away from it, you know, that type thing. So, dude, they were lying to us. Uh, and they were lying to us because, you know, if, if you start using this herb, uh, then you don't need their pills. And, uh, and you don't need their cancer centers, you know. Uh, from what I understand, my sister died uh, two, three years ago from uh, chemotherapy. She had cancer, but it was the chemo that killed her. It wasn't the cancer. So nine out of ten people that get on chemo um, die from chemo, not from the cancer. So um, the other day I was um, at a s store here in Austin called Joanne Fabrics. And uh, I was there looking for a cape for um, the character uh, from Useless Information. <laughs> and I heard this lady on the phone talking to her friend about how her her friend, another friend of theirs, was about to start chemotherapy for, um, uh, for breast cancer. And I didn't know, you know, I didn't want to let her know that I was eavesdropping or, or anything, because I wasn't doing that. She was just in the next aisle talking on the phone really loud. So finally, I, you know, got the courage up to go up to her, and I said, look, tell your friend to go to Colorado, you know, go to Denver and uh, seek help there. Tell her not to get on the chemo. Uh, of course, you want to ask your doctor, you know, um, what's the best thing for you. But, dude, if it's not working and you feel horrible, you know, you need to get to uh, Colorado and um, see if they can help you. They've helped so many people. Um, another use that I found, uh, the other day I, had, I was kind of upset uh, with a friend of mine. And, uh, and so I told him, I said, dude, come on over. We need to talk. We need to sit down and we need to talk, you know, because uh, we need to get this handled. And I was really, really upset uh, about the situation. So then I, I thought back about how the Native Americans, uh, they had what they called a peace pipe. And whenever the tribes or somebody was having, you know, problems uh, where they weren't getting along, they would sit around and they would smoke out of this peace pipe. And so I thought to myself, I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do that before he shows up so that I won't be so upset. Dude, to work like a charm. <laughs> so Native Americans, which also, Mexicans are also Native Americans. There's just a line that was put there, and now they're called Mexicans. But they're actually Native Americans also. Um, so I was thinking, just think about how cool that would be if right before you went into divorce court, you had to, you know, you had to partake in some herbalage, you know, and how cool everybody would be, you know, yeah, dude, take the TV, take the car, yeah, I don't care, take it, you know, just think <laughs> of how cool that would be. It's an idea, you know, I'm not saying that it has to happen, but it's an idea. Um, a couple of, um, other things. C.J. Wiedenbeck, um, he used to be one of our DPs. Um, I saw a video of him uh, in his uh, army uniform, and dude, you looked really cool, man. <laughs> you looked really cool. So, um, so here's to you, C.J. We miss you, bud. Mm. Um, another couple of things I wanted to um, to bring up was um, there was a uh, a very distinguished. A uh, lady that passed away today, her name was Barbara Bush, and she was married to the senior, uh, George, I don't remember his middle initial, but George Bush. Uh, so I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, Godspeed, Barbara, you know, um, and good luck on the next level. Um, the other person that I wanted to, to mention to you guys is... Um, you guys remember this gunnery uh, drill sergeant from Full Metal Jacket? Well, he passed away uh, also. So uh, I actually wanted to use him in a film, and I wasn't, uh, it just, we didn't get the film going in time. So that's him. And uh, so Godspeed to him. He uh, became an actor and did a great, great job with everything. So please stay tuned. Don't go away. Stay tuned because we got some more really cool stuff coming. We got Shane Bryce coming up after this clip. We'll be right back.
<coughs> yeah, we're um, we're <coughs> testing these smoke alarms. <coughs> all right. <coughs> anyway, um, all right, kids. So I want to introduce you to one of the guys that does our um, our sound, um, and it's not an easy job. So I wanted to go ahead and bring him in. His name is Shane Rice. Shane, come on in. All right, babe, go ahead and sit down. Have a seat. We brought the good chair uh, for Shane. So, um, Shane, tell us a little bit um, about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, so, I'm originally from Bush, Louisiana. Woo! Bush, Louisiana? Yep, yep. Wow, dude, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, it, it, um, it. What else? Um, so, how long have you been in Austin? Uh, about 10 years now. 10 years? Moved here in 2007, so yeah, a little, little, little more than 10 years. And how old are you? Uh, 26. 26, okay. So you were 16 when you came to Austin. Yep. Awesome. And um, why are you here? Why are you helping us do sound here? I mean, you could be out partying with your buddies or, you know, running from the cops. Well, you know, um, I've known Tyrone for a long time. Yeah. And he was looking for somebody else to help out with the show, and I told him that I'd give it a shot, and here we are. And here you are. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Well, dude, we're glad to have you. Um, Shane is the guy that, you know, if you're a future band uh, that's going to be performing here, or a future uh, singer, whatever, he's the guy that you're going to talk to about uh, what you need equipment-wise, what you don't need to bring, you know, that type thing. So tell me, how old were you when you decided, well, is this what you really want to do, is sound? I mean, I know that you've uh, used the studios here um, for, uh, for, for other, you know, other, I guess, rappers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, so tell me a little bit about that. What, what, what are you working on right now? I mean, so, so right now, me and a couple of other people are working on some joint projects that may or may not include some rap. Nice. Uh, most of that is under tight lock and key, so I can't really talk about most of okay. it. Okay, But okay. it's out there, and okay. when it gets released, it'll, it'll be out there. Nice. Um, I mean, as far as me personally, like I don't really have a set goal of mm -hmm. I want to do this specifically, but yeah. I've always been interested in music and interested in the behind the scenes of it. Mm -hmm and just doing stuff with that. I started producing when I was 17 or 18. Okay. Kind of gone from there. Well, do you do a great job here? Um, I don't know, you know why you guys do it, but I'm glad that you do come and help us. Um, so tell me, d what instruments do you play? Because you're a musician yeah, also. Yeah, so yeah. I play guitar, drums. Those are mm -hmm. my two that I'm actually like what I would say proficient at, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I do also mess around a little bit with like piano and keyboards and stuff like that. And nice. then also bass. Nice. Um, so you've always got a job, no matter what, because you can play all these different instruments, you know, so you'll always have a job. Um, what I would guess. you, if, if I could offer you one, one job and it would be the, exactly what you've always wanted to do, what would that job be? Uh, probably like owning a record label. Owning a record label, okay. Uh, that would be probably the, the top for me, because then I could just do whatever I wanted and then, yeah. You know. Well, what does it take to own a record label? What do you have to do? Produce records. Right, right. You know, sign artists and promote them. Mm -hmm. and there's, there's, there's a lot to it. I've looked into it a little bit. Okay. Well, I think the first thing, I guess, would be to get a DBA at uh, doing business as, right, you yeah, know. Yeah. And what would you choose? What name, what cool name would you choose? The, you know, I haven't actually thought about like the name of a record label. How about how about Rice Records? Uh, Dude, doesn't that, that sound that cool? Kind of has a little yeah. To it, yeah. And you could have like little flakes of rice on the you know on the albums. You know. I don't know. Um, um, the other day, I got to tell you something really funny. Uh, the other day, I was talking to this friend of mine, um, Aaron. I call him Psycho Boy because he drives a motorcycle. But he thought I was calling him Psycho Boy because he's psycho. Well, you are psycho, but that's okay. We still love you. But um, I was telling him the other day that I wanted to go to this guy who uh, was selling 45s. And I said, I need to get about 150 to 200, um, 145. I need about 200 uh, 45s for my jukebox. And 
he didn't know, because he's so young, he didn't know what a 45 was. So he thought that I wanted to go buy 150 to 245 caliber yeah, pistols, guns, you know? Yeah. And I just, I just sat there and I was like, oh my God, dude, I can't believe this guy. He doesn't know what a 45 is. So anyway, um, yes, I have a jukebox, 1970 something, three or something like that, uh, jukebox, um, and it needs records. So if you have 45s and you don't want them anymore, send them to me or I'll buy them from you. So, okay, anyway, I just had to tell that story because I thought it was pretty funny. You know, um, they do still press 45s. Yeah, I know, and I, I, it would be so cool. I'll give you an idea, guys, of what I'm doing with my jukebox. If I have a, a 45 where one song A is good, but song B sucks, well, then I'm gonna buy another 45 and I'm gluing them together so that I'll be able to get twice as many songs that I really like instead of just one out of each record. I know, I know. I need I need another hobby, but um, but anyway, <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get back to my schedule here, so that I know how much time. Okay. Okay. So um, so where do you want to go with this record label? I mean, do you want to sign just anybody, or do you want to sign certain acts? Like I mean, I think I think my bar personally would be mm -hmm. pretty high and focused on like actual artistry. Yeah. You know, like there, I know there are a lot of musicians and artists out there who are not as much focused on the quality of the art and mm -hmm. the art form itself as they are just, oh, here's a way for me to make money. Here's a way right. for me to just, you know, get up on stage and act a fool. Right. And if that's what you want, that's fine. It's mm -hmm. just, I think that there also needs to be a place for artists who are artists to, right. you know, flourish. Well, but I mean, like, um, would you rather do rappers or would you rather do country I, and western? I don't care. Would you you I, don't I, care? I you have just no preference as far as like genre okay. of music. Okay. And same thing goes for like what I listen to. There's all across the board. Nice, nice. Well, dude, you know we'll help you any way we can, you know, to, to get that off the ground. Because, dude, we'll help anybody that helps us. Right, Savvy? We'll help anybody that helps us. Um, so, okay, so you play a bunch of different instruments. Uh, what is your favorite kind of music? My favorite yeah. kind of music? I think that really just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. Um, like I said, I listen to pretty much everything. The, there, there's one that stands out that most people are just like, what? Which is uh, Scottish Highland music, mm -hmm. like bagpipes and drums. Right, right. Uh, I was in a oh, dude, Scottish love, bagpipe band I love for bagpipes. two, three years wow. playing drums. And some of the most interesting stuff that I've ever done personally, mm -hmm. and then also just like, I don't know, the, the bug kind of bit me, and nice. nothing like listening to bagpipes. Dude, I love the sound of the bagpipes. I don't know why, maybe I've got Scottish blood in me or something like that. I know one of my grandmas got around, you know, or my grandpa, one of my grandmas and grandpas <laughs> got around, I'll tell you that, but, um, but I've always liked the Scottish music. Why don't, um, do you know any of those band members that could come and perform for us? Uh, you know, you I don't here in town, uh -huh. uh, but I've been I've been kind of getting the urge to, to jump back into that. So we we might we might get that to happen over the next couple of months and we'll see what's up. Dude, that would be awesome, man. That would be really really cool. So you live here in Austin now. Are you planning to leave Austin or do you want to stay in Austin? You know, uh, Austin is a great place. I think that if I intend to stay in the United States, Austin is a fine place to stay, assuming that I can continue to afford my rent. Okay. Um, but I definitely do have plans some point of moving outside of the United States. Yeah. Just because there's a lot of stuff that happens in the United States that I don't want to associate myself with. Right, right. And okay. So um, I'm so glad that you're here to help us. Is, is mom watching or dad watching? Probably anybody? Not. Well, what, you told him? Did you tell him that no. you're going to be on the air? No. Oh. <laughs> Well, Ma, Dad, I'm sorry he didn't tell you, but he's on the air. What are you going to do? So, um, well, dude, I just want to thank you for helping us. I mean, you do a great job. Um, and, uh, you know, please, please don't stop helping us. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> you lot know, because we're going places, dude. So thank you so much. Um, kids, stay tuned. We'll be right back. And uh, we've got the Texas Normal Puff and Puff uh, clip coming up. And then after that, I believe we're going to go straight into useless information. And, um, and then we'll be back after that. So stay tuned, don't go away. <laughs>
one. Hey kids, we're at the 5th Annual Puffin Putt Festival at Willie Nelson's Golf Course in Spicewood, Texas, baby! Ow! Hey kids, we're here at the fifth annual Puff and Putt celebration at Willie Nelson's golf course. What is it? Why are we here? Well, Normal Texas is here to tell you guys um, why marijuana needs to be legalized. So stay with us and learn something. Hey kids, Dave's right here, man. Yeah, right here, man. And we also got Scott LeRock over here on the other side. <laughs> so uh, we're well, here at the fifth annual Puff and Putt Golf Tournament. Where is it? Willie, Willie Nelson's, Nelson's Golf, Golf Course. Course. That's right, Spicewood, dude. Texas. That's right. Spicewood, yeah. And uh, why do you guys have this festival? So five years ago. Uh huh. Willie Nelson's granddaughter, Rebecca, okay. who runs this operation out here, yeah. invited Texas Normal to come out and do this festival and raise money for our work with veterans. Because we work with veterans who suffer from PTSD, chronic pain, and other injuries from their service. Nice. And we're working to get a medical marijuana program in Texas. Nice. And so that's what, is, what got us started with the veterans. Um, I joined, I retired from the Army in 2006, and I joined Texas Normal in 2012 because I wanted to stop using opioid pain medications right, right. for chronic pain and psychotropic medications for PTSD. Nice. And I didn't want to do it uh, as a criminal because mm -hmm. I'm not a criminal. Right. I served in the Army for 21 years. Nice. Uh, I was a school teacher for 10 years here in Texas. Wow. Uh, and now I'm a retired person in yeah. my golden years. I'm 62 years old now. Well, what was tougher, the Army or the teaching? They were both equally tough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. In, in their own way. They, they were awesome. both very challenging. Awesome. And what kind of um, obstacles have you uh, run into? as far as getting it legalized? I mean, who is in standing in the way? Texas Normal was founded in 1973 in okay. Texas. Okay. So that's how long wow. Texans have been working to legalize marijuana. Wow. Uh, and we're still working on it. Okay. Uh, we have the full support of Willie Nelson and many other people, uh, but it just hasn't happened. Uh, because the bottom line is, prohibition started here in Texas. Wow. And it was uh, it started down in El Paso, okay. uh, and it was a racist law okay. against Mexican people, uh, and uh, it it then started affecting not only Mexican people but yeah. everybody, black people, white people. Okay. Texas arrests seventy thousand of its own citizens every year for possessing marijuana. Wow! Year after year, that's a lot of wow. people. Wow! Yeah. And we want that to stop. And I should not be arrested for using ma marijuana for PTSD and chronic pain because exactly. I'm a I'm a honest citizen. Right, right. This is the only law I break. Right. But I'll break the law. Right. Uh, because marijuana is better for me than these opioid pain medications exactly. and the psychotropic medications, which cause me to be dependent on them right. uh, and have terrible side effects. Right. And so when I after I joined Texas Normal, I met other veterans like Scott, my buddy Scott here. Uh -huh. uh, and then we met other veterans. And okay. now we know hundreds, several thousand veterans across the state of Texas. Okay. Uh, and we've started this movement called Texas Veterans for Medical Marijuana. 
Nice. And, and Scott's been in on it from the beginning. Nice. Uh, Scott, how, how did you get involved, man? So, man, the stone I contribute is the artwork. So I design all of our merchandise and things like that, promos. Nice. And I did that in the military also for a little while. I was only in for four years. I didn't quite have a career, full career like Dave. And, and what branch were you? And I was in Navy Aviation. His and Navy. I was in a helicopter squadron. And I actually participated in the war on drugs back in the late 80s. Wow. Which well, opened my eyes, which made me want to become part of the solution. Well, first of all, thank you guys for your service. And thank you for, um, you know, trying to bring awareness to people. Um, I didn't know about this festival. I didn't know that it had been here, that this was your fifth one you had. Um, and we are hoping that Willie does show up. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. He's in the area. So uh, you never know. So if somebody wanted to buy one of your shirts, where would they go? Uh, right around the corner to right the around. Texas Normal booth. Well, let's say if they're not no. here. Oh, Texas, if they're not here. Uh, yeah. TexasNormal.org. Yes. Okay. TexasNormal.org. TexasNormal.org. Texas yes. All right. So, kids, um, that's it. We're here at the um, fifth annual Puff and Puff. Yes. Festival. Let's say it all together. Ready? Okay. One, yes. two, three. The, the fifth, fifth annual Puff, Puff and Putt Festival, Festival at Willie, Willie Nelson's, Nelson's Golf, Golf Course in Spicewood, Texas, Texas, baby! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. Thank you. And we'll be right back. How was it? Hi, kids. We're here with Tony from the Austin Made Glass Company. What is your website? Uh, AMGC. AMGC.com. There you go. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the stuff that you uh, that you make here. These beautiful pieces. Well, these are all just regular pipes made uh -huh. locally by Austin glass blowers. Nice, nice. And I like you have all these different designs. Which one is your biggest seller out of all of these? Ah, uh, just the most affordable piece here. The most affordable. The common. Okay. Food. And how much, like this one here, that's how much $12. is this? $12. $12? Wow, that's a good deal. And uh, how long have you been blowing gas? Oh, uh, glass, I'm sorry. <laughs> Over 23 years. 23 years, wow. Well, dude, this is beautiful work. Thank you. It really is. And this one is, oh, <laughs> Well, I, I guess it's back to papers. Hi kids, we're here with Rio Signs of Pure Hempology. Now Rio, um, tell me what Pure Hempology is. Pure Hempology is the name of my company I created to produce some of the best cannabinol products here in the country. Nice. Cannabinol is the medical component side of the cannabis plant without the psychoactive effects. And I developed Pure Hempology about a year ago here in Texas to provide Texans with the best products that they can get. Nice, nice. And uh, why uh, should people um, smoke uh, marijuana? People should smoke cannabis and consume cannabinol because at one point over you know, the past several hundred years, it's been a part of our daily diet. Right. It's been used as medicines in the 1800s. It was prescribed for over 200 different ailments by doctors. Mm -hmm. Early 1900s, they chose alcohol over it and everybody started getting sick. Yeah. Everybody's getting sick. All the cancers, right. everything, and all these other countries that don't ban it, they don't have cancer epidemics, things like that. They still use it a part of their daily diet. Right. And there's plenty of versions out there where you don't even get the psychoactive effects and you get 100% of the medical side. You know, when I was a kid, um, whenever I got sick, like if I got a cold or something, my dad would put some um, cannabis in the alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, and then he would put it on me and dude, you just felt great, yes. you know, you weren't miserable anymore, you were hungry and you were, you know, it helped so much. So, um, what do you suggest that people do to try to help um, legalize um, the cannabis? First, the first push to legalizing it here in the States is to get rid of the stigma. We have uh, athletes, Olympic athletes that are advocates. Exactly. We have UFC fighters that are advocates. Exactly. Uh, lazy stoners, that's that's not that's not true anymore right it, right it's a lie right there's plenty of successful people that consume cannabis all day every day exactly it's happening across the country now well i happen to know of one called willie nelson i don't know if you ever heard of him or not but um he from what i understand i wouldn't know for a fact that um he partakes daily 
Willie Nelson is one of the biggest <laughs> advocates for cannabis in the world. Exactly. In the country. He has exactly. his own shops and everything. I mean, look at all the other people that he sang beside. They all died. Yeah. Because they were consuming all the different drugs, yeah. all the alcohol, and then here you've yeah. got Willie Nelson just burning down. Right. And living his life to the fullest. Right. And still exactly. singing and bouncing around. Exactly. So, um, where do where where would we go to get your products? So my products is on PureHempology.com. We're based out of Marble Falls, Texas. We're opening up a store here in two weeks. A nice. storefront so to actually have a CBD dispensary makes it a little bit more accessible to people. And our whole goal is moving forward from day one last year. We set out this goal and these dates and more and more people are getting rid of the stigma. Right. And that's all we can do is just try to re-educate people, get rid of the stigma. Right. And then everybody's going to start to understand that athletes need this. They're not even in a peak performance unless they're consuming cannabis. Right. You don't have to smoke cannabis to consume it. There's right. so many different variations. How you said it can be applied topically and give exactly. just the same effect. Exactly. And today is March 31st of 2018. And you said you're opening up a shop in two weeks. In two, and here in two weeks. There's only a few dispensaries opening up and we're getting ready for the cannabis push. You know, as soon as that turns, you know, we'll be able to offer somebody, the veterans and everybody down here, children, the other good side of the plant. You know, right. we have to choose one down here. We can't right. have both. So right. we have to take what we can get and that's CBDs. But once you put right. those two together, there's nothing better. One quick question. Um, hemp used to be used for paper. Yes. And now it's not. No. Can you tell us anything about that yes. or, you know? Uh, hemp, uh, the USS constitutional ship that came up, uh, overseas mm -hmm. to America in the beginning, mm -hmm. that had over 64 tons of hemp on it. Wow. Every sail, yeah. every uh, book, shoes, uh, uniforms, the ropes, everything, even eating it is a superfood. So they're able to eat the hemp herds also. I mean, the. Uh, Parachutes were made out of it. It's right. the strongest fiber known to man. Wow. It is the strongest fiber. Well, now, and hemp, is hemp different from marijuana? It's, uh, no, it's not. Cannabis is the, the, the true definition is uh, just cannabis, the genus cannabis sativa plant, okay. which means every family member in that, you know, it's like saying each tomato plant's different. It's not, they're all okay. tomatoes, just a right. difference. Hemp is just something that was produced that had such low THC that they figured out the textile purposes. Nice. The first decorticating machines for cotton that people used to process cotton, right. they weren't even invented for cotton, they were developed for hemp. Wow. Our presidents, the yeah. founding fathers, all grew it and right. manufactured it because they saw it. Right. And up until 1937 was when the true prohibition started. And we marked 88 years. Wow. This past August, we marked 88 years of prohibition. Wow. And we have over half our states medical. Yeah. We have another year or two, and right. it's going federal. Wow. As long as people keep on re-educating people, doing things like this. Exactly. So there, you see, kids, you just learned something new. And stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, kids, we're here with Joshua Ace, and he's with an organization called Are We Home Yet? That's the Facebook page, Are We Home Yet? And tell us a little bit, Joshua, about uh, what is Are We Home Yet about? Are We Home Yet? We promote um, post traumatic stress disorder for the combat infantry veterans, police, and firefighters. Everybody that serves this nation in regards to firefighters, veterans, and police officers that are disabled or retired elderly. Um, what we do is we promote um, canine training and we tailor these, these service dogs straight for the service members. Okay. That's what we do. We also here today on support of cannabis and hemp um, for medical purposes mm -hmm. for the service members because I believe in it 100%. Okay, and uh, it seems like they're trying to work out a deal for uh, to get um, cannabis for veterans that have P PTSD. And um, where where do we stand on that? Uh, right now, the American Legion and their highest members are working with senators and congressmen as we speak okay. to legalize it, at least for medical for the veterans in the VA. And I, that's something I know I can talk about it because we're doing that right now. Right. It, it, we're, we're putting as much effort as we can to legalize it, decriminalize and regulate. And this all okay. means good taxes for all of us. Exactly, exactly. And um, it seems that anytime a veteran gets something uh, eventually, then they'll do it for civilians also if they feel that it's a good thing, correct? You're right. You okay. are totally right. Uh, most of our technology, pills, 
you, you name it, your pages, your cell phone, your GPS, what's a military technology, even, even um, what is that pill when you get sick, you take, it, it, all these pills, everything yeah. has gone through the military first. Right. And then it goes through the civilian world because they got to test it first. Right, right. So I believe, I'm a firm believer uh -huh. that once we pass regulation and decriminalization and all this for cannabis, medical for veterans, it'll soon follow lawsuit right. with the civilian world. I'm right. pretty sure of that. Right. And tell me a little bit about the dogs. The dogs, I also train dogs for disabled veterans, police and firefighters. This is Ares, the Greek God of War. This is Bruce Lee. I train a total of 29 dogs plus and more than 300 on and off. Okay, all right. And um, how would somebody get a hold of you um, uh, if they want to find out more about the dogs or how they can help? The dogs have uh, their own page. It's called Love My Dog. It's very simple. It's separated and, and, and I need support. I just moved from New York City. We're going to establish a canine unit here to train service dogs for free. No awesome. cost to the service members. Awesome. We're, we're talking about from $5,000 to $20,000 per dog. Okay. All right. So kids, if you want to help out, this is a great cause, man. This is a great cause. And uh, Joshua, I want to thank you for your service. You're and welcome. I want to thank You're you for welcome. taking Anything. the time to talk to us. Thank you. Um, this is a kind of a really serious um, thing, so please um, check out the, um, their Facebook page, and uh, it's called Are We Home Yet? Okay? All right. Thanks, kids, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, kids, we're back, man. No, hey, kids, uh, we've got Rebecca Thomas. She's the event coordinator. She's also Willie Nelson's granddaughter. So I'm just gonna rub her skin and get some of that THC. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, and we also have Jack Spinkel. She's uh, the executive director of this festival. So can you guys tell us a little bit about why you're involved in this festival? Go ahead. Well, so this is a veteran benefit, and it's also to help legalize cannabis in Texas. And uh, Willie was very kind and mm -hmm. decided to let us use the course and coordinate with Rebecca. Rebecca and I have been working together on this for quite a few years. And it's a really great benefit because you can have a lot of great music, a lot of great vendors, and then you're supporting a really good cause, veterans, right? right. Who need access to medical cannabis for right. service-related disability. Right. So it's a really great cause, and it's a beautiful location. Mm -hmm. You know, you get golf, you get disc golf, right. you get a little bit of everything, and so we're really happy to be able to be hosted here. Yep. Awesome, the awesome. Great vendors as well, and food, and yeah. just all the way around the music. It's just a fabulous event to put everybody together. Awesome. And you have the in with Willie. Uh, do you know if he's going to be here today? He will not. He's he will out of not? town. Yeah, okay. he's out of town. He, um, okay. he usually travels on the road, and when he's off, he's either between Texas or Maui. So he's okay. in Maui right now. Right. Oh, Probably nice. doing about the same thing we are, but <laughs> in a whole different level. <laughs> what? You mean Willie Nelson smokes? He doesn't have his own brand for nothing. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Willie's reserved for a reason. There you go. There you go. Well, kids, um, this cannabis, I happen to have a friend who has P PTSD. And he uses cannabis. Uh, he got off of the medication that the, they had him on, and he got on cannabis, and now he sleeps through the night, he eats, he's lost that, you know, anxiousness, uh, being um, always anxious. He was, and uh, sometimes uh, he would come and stay the night, and in the middle of the night, from the other side of the house, I would hear a BAM! You know, and I was like, what was that? And I get up, I go to the guest room, and he was, banging up on the wall, you know? And uh, so I said, dude, you gotta change, what, whatever they're giving you isn't working, you know? Yeah. So you gotta change it. I said, you, maybe you should smoke something, you know, oh, I can't do that because then I'll lose my benefits. And then, it, dude, it's helping them. And this is proof, they're doing all this to help veterans and to educate you guys. So it's time to wake up. So. Rebecca and Jax, thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice to meet thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We thank you all for it. being here. And thank you for all your hard work. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll be thank here you. next year. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> next year will be the sixth annual. That's correct. The sixth one, right? Yep, all right, kids. Good. We'll be right back. Hey, kids. We're up on the chuck wagon with Rebecca Thomas granddaughter of Willie Nelson. Yeah, Willie Nelson. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you noticed, Rebecca, but I have this particular joint that I'm, um, I'm saving for Willie uh, once he comes on our show. 
Um, I've actually um, I've been working on doing his voice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'll give you a little example. <clears throat> All the girls I've loved before. There you go. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But um, the one that I'm really working on is the one where he did a song with uh, Ray Charles, mm -hmm. Seven Spanish Angels. And I'm actually working on doing both voices at the same time. Very good. So, and I'm, I've almost got it. So, there you go. Um, tell us a little bit about Rebecca. Tell, what was it like growing up as Willie Nelson's granddaughter? I mean, what well, kind of... Very, the perks, very cool. The perks very and the cool. not so perks. Very cool. I can remember from the time that I was a real little girl, we would go to the Austin Opera House and listen to him play. And number one, I knew I didn't have school the next day. Uh -huh. And uh, I was just tall enough to barely see his feet from you know the bottom of the stage. And he would always you know throw a bandana like he does to all of his fans and right, right. blow a kiss or something. But you know those are good mm -hmm. memories. And uh, it's just always been a pleasure being raised out here, uh, being able to utilize our golf course, and you know just having family close by is very important. And what, what would you say would be a drawback of being related to somebody so famous? Would you, would you yeah. say, would you think that there's anything, any kind of a drawback? I don't really think there is one, honestly. Well, yeah. even if there was one, you could just smoke it away. You know what I'm talking about? Um, let me ask you another question. Um, tell us, you know, something about Willie that most people, you know, the fans wouldn't normally ever know. What could you tell us about him that that they just nobody knows? I'm just trying to think. Huh. Like, is there anything that he does? I think he's pretty laid back enough to like most everything. Yeah. So you know, he's he's just comfort zone. You know, out of mm -hmm. his element, he prefers to stay on the bus versus you know at home more than uh, likely. He's you can find him even at a hotel staying on the bus. You know, just enjoying that comfort of his his lifestyle. Right. And what, uh, let's say, what is his favorite meal? Oh, for sure, it's, uh, you know, bacon, eggs, biscuits, and gravy. Yeah, and oatmeal, you know, those are about the two things that he most likely, you know, will eat at any time of the day. And there you have it. Yeah. And um, I don't know, um, somebody said this to me earlier, um, and it made a lot of sense, that a lot of Willie's friends that were also famous, and are still famous, but they've passed on, um, a lot of them have passed on, and Willie hasn't, because Willie gave up the bad things that he was doing and then took up smoking cannabis and he's a he is the supporter you know one of the main supporters he's letting them do this you know so um, from what I understand back in 1973 um, he helped uh, help the organization by opening up an office and they only thought it was going to take two or three years to get cannabis legal. And in, here we are, 2018, and it's still not legal. Um, but the cool thing is that if, it, if they make it legal for vets, then the civilians will follow. So keep up the fight. Don't give up. Keep up the fight. And thank you so much for, for coming and talking to us. And we're going to let you go get something to eat now. There we're in go. the truck wagon. Yes, we are. Thank you, Rebecca yes, thank Thomas. You. Nice to meet you. All right, kids, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Number one, when a Hawaiian woman 
when she wears a flower over her left ear, it means that she is not available, baby. So if she got a flower on her left ear, don't go near that woman because her husband will kill you. They will, they're mean. They can really kill you. So if you see a woman with a flower on her left ear, cut it out. Go the other way. Just of information, number two. The save icon on Microsoft Word shows a floppy disk with a shutter on backwards. You didn't know that. You know you didn't know that. What? Well, maybe you're not. Just as information, number three. The only nation whose name begins with the letter A but doesn't end with the A is Afghanistan. Did you know that? The only nation whose name begins with the letter A but doesn't end with an A is Afghanistan. So now you know because you need to know that. Yes, you do. Shut up. You need to know it. If you don't know it, who's going to know it? Shut up. Just as information, number four. The following sentence, a rough-coated, dough-faced, thoughtful plowman strode through the streets of Scarborough after falling into a slough, he coughed and hiccuped. It contains the nine different pronunciations of ah in the English language. Do you want me to repeat it? Okay, I'm gonna repeat it, because you think I'm wrong, but I'm not wrong. Here you go. A rough-coated, dough-faced, thoughtful plowman strode through the streets of Scarborough. After falling into a slough, he coughed and hiccuped. Contains the nine different pronunciations of ach in the English language. You didn't know it. Tell me, did you know it? No, you didn't. Shut up. Jesus information, number five. The verb cleave is the only English word with two synonyms, which are antonyms of each other, and here and separate. Do you want me to tell it again? I'll tell it again. But first, let me show you my dog, because I know that makes you happy. It makes you happy to see my belt. It makes me happy to see my belt, because it's hard, it's hard. And it's soft, too, baby. Here's some softness, but it's rock hard, too. I'll say it one more time. The verb cleave is the only English word with two synonyms, which are antonyms of each other, and here and separate. That's it. That's all I got for you today. So shut up. Sit back, relax, take a sip, do something. But you gotta do something. Maybe go for a walk or something. Get up. There's a whole world out there that you're not seeing. You're staying inside all the time. Get out. Take a walk. You got a dog? Take her for a walk. You got a cat? Take it for a walk. You got a wife? Take her for a walk. You got a husband? Take him for a walk. Get out of the house or do something. You're not doing nothing. Oh, yeah. Viva Mexico!
<coughs> yeah, <coughs> we're back, kids. <coughs> Woo! Can you believe that's good for your lungs? All right. <coughs> so, a couple of things that we wanted to mention about the clip you just watched. Um, Jason Cox, C O X, um, he had a, uh, <coughs> a wagon, a chuck wagon there, that he does catering. We weren't able to get uh, to use the clip because it was too windy. So we weren't able to use the clip with him. But uh, Jason, dude, thank you so much. You're an awesome guy. If you want information, he brings a chuck wagon and he cooks with the, you know, the iron skillets and stuff like that. So, uh, and it's awesome. His food is delicious. So if you want to get a hold of him, you can get through the uh, normal Texas people and they will tell you how to get a hold of him. Or you can just Google him, Jason Cox, C O X. Um, and what else? <coughs> <coughs> it's good. Herbal medication is good for you. <coughs> so anyway, a um, couple of things. Um, dude, if you have a kid that's sick, and the doctor tells you he's got cancer, um, you know, don't, don't, and this is my opinion, you want to check with your doctor, but um, dude, um, take him to Colorado, you know, if you want him to live. If your kid, they've even found out that this helps uh, kids that have seizures. What they do is they put that uh, oil on their feet and it makes them stop having the seizures. There was some guy I saw that had, um, I don't remember if it was cerebral palsy or something, and it just helped him relax so much, you know. So, dude, it's, it's, it's a good plant. And it's sad that our government has been lying to us for so many years, and it's sad that so many people are in jail. Uh, but one really cool thing, um, they're saying, from what I've read before, that the Native Americans that is now called Mexico, that they're the ones that introduced uh, cannabis to uh, the northern United States, you know, or to North America. So... <coughs> Keep that in mind. Um, they're bringing you the cure uh, for cancer, and you're trying to build a wall to keep them out. So, hmm. Anyway, so saying uh, you were talking about something about you, you were uh, working on a project, or you wanted you wanted to promote something. Yeah, so I got uh, um, my SoundCloud name is okay. uh, Dark Side Productions. Okay. It's D A R X I D E hyphen Productions. Okay. And you can listen to all the stuff that I have on there. Or not. I don't care. <laughs> we'll give it to him one more time, but kind of slow. D-A-R-X-I-D-E uh -huh. hyphen productions. There you go. So look that up and listen to some awesome music. Do you, do you um, feel anything from the... Um, Smoke alarm uh, testing machines. <coughs> I, I think I yeah. think that was a really quality test. <laughs> yeah, that's thing. a quality yeah. test, folks. Um, it's it's good to be in Austin. Um, <laughs> so um, good to go. Um, I wish I didn't even think about this a long time ago, but I wish that I had thought about this uh, when my sister was around because she went through chemo and it killed her. Um, I wish that I had taken her to Colorado. Or I wish I knew about it. You know. Uh, back then I didn't know you know all the different things that it could cure but you know dude if it's your kids you know uh, my opinion screw the laws take them to Colorado get them cured you know uh, these are your kids and this is could be your mom your dad your brother your sister uh, cousin nephew whatever you know take them to Colorado you know um, and make sure that uh, that you know you check into that because that could be the cure um, one of the things I, I wanted to thank Shane for, you know, sitting with us, um, and real That's clammy cool. hands, <laughs> real <laughs> clammy hands, so he's a little nervous, um, but. Well, it was cold in here earlier, so I put a jacket on, but it's not as cold in here under all these lights, so. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I keep it cold in here, so, but uh, we do want to thank uh, Scott LaRock from um, Texas Normal. Uh, and Not Jack the Scott Finkel Rock you're thinking of. from Texas Normal. <laughs> and dude, um, awesome guys. Um, and we had a great time out there. Thank you for letting us use the golf carts. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, everybody was really, really super nice to us. So <sighs> take your loved ones to Colorado. Get them fixed right. And one other thing. Viva Mexico! <laughs> Big Daddy G Show.
Daddy.